All righty, here we go. We're going to look at a, a bunch of different graphs, and we're going to learn how to interpret them, okay? And before we do that, actually, we need to understand a little bit more about this terminology. So, first of all, I hope you're getting comfortable at this point now, uh, understanding that your x-axis is what they call the independent variable, or in your domain, okay? That's the input value, right? This is the input, and this is the output. So uh, whenever you make a T table, for example, right, if you ever make a T table, right, then you choose the X's, you usually choose uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, whatever, and you find the Y's, right, given on your function. So uh, the X axis is your independent. So uh, your X axis is your independent and your Y axis is your dependent, right? So where you are up and down depends on where you are this way. So this determines where you are in the function. Sure. Okay. All right. Now let's move on here. We're going to look at a graph right here. And the issues with this is that um, we'll look at it first of all and tell me what your problem might be. You might ask me, what are the units? What's the scale on this thing? You don't even know what it's for, right? But these are the different types of situations you're going to be looking at. You have a steep line that's increasing, okay? And then you got kind of a steep line that's decreasing. Here it's horizontal, small increase, steep increase, decrease, uh, shallow decrease. So what's the difference between steepness? What's the um, importance of a horizontal line, right? Well, these all depend on what your uh, units are. So for example, down here, we often have time. So let me put time down here. It could be hours, it could be seconds, it could be minutes, whatever. Now, you can have a variety of different things on the y-axis. So if we put distance here, right? Well, you're comparing, for example, the distance traveled in one hour, right? And how far you travel in one hour usually Hopefully, people understand that that would be a speed, right? So if you have a distance time graph, then your relationship is speed. And a steeper line, steep line like this means that you are going faster than a shallow line. This means that you're going forwards. This mean, could mean that you're going backwards or back towards where you got to, right? This line here would mean that you haven't moved anywhere. It's just you're keeping the same distance. And then you're going slower, maybe walking now. And then here you're going back home again, but faster. And then you decided to walk back home. So it's it's about looking at the labels. You have to look at what your labels are. Because if this is a speed thing, then if it's speed versus time, then these lines now become a different value, right? This horizontal line would be a constant speed. It doesn't mean you're standing still. This means that your speed is increasing. An increasing speed is called acceleration. This means that your speed is decreasing. That's called deceleration. And then uh, this would be a faster acceleration than that. Okay. So it all depends on what we call our axes. And this is essentially what we need to look for. Okay. So what you need to look for when you are identifying or interpreting these graphs is you need to look at the scale on the x and the y axis. Okay. You also need to look for a difference in steepness. Is it steep or is it shallow? Right? Now, is it increasing, which would kind of look like this, an increasing line or a decreasing line, right? Going up, going down. I think that's pretty obvious. Difference between steep and shallow as well. Okay. And then horizontal lines. Boop! Horizontal lines. How do those affect my function? And how does that look, a horizontal line, right? And then the last thing would be to look for the continuous or discrete variables. That means, do you connect the dots or do you not connect the dots? Are there values that exist in between or are there not values that exist in between? Okay, so what we're going to look at are some simple graphs here and see if you can interpret this thing right here. So a scuba diver's dive. I could ask you, how long was the dive? Well, you have to look. Okay, this is time in minutes, and this is the depth that he went. So, first of all, what does this tell me here? The maximum depth is 20 meters. How long was the dive in total? Well, just past, what is this? Is this 29 or is it 30? Well, you got to look at the scale now. It looks like every tick is 2. So, 24, 26, 28, 30. So, it was a 30-minute dive, right? Maximum depth, we said, was 
20 meters. How long did he stay at 20 meters? Well, two ticks, they're each two, so that's four, right? Did he stop anywhere else for a while or was he always moving? Well, looks like he stopped here too at 12 meters, stayed there for four minutes. He went down to 12 meters in four minutes. So you could probably tell me how fast he's going down, right? And then he went from 20 meters to the surface in how long? How long did it take him to get from the bottom to the surface? Well, we look down here, boom. That's 14 to 30. So it took him 16 minutes to surface, right? So we're not looking at really funky things. We're just looking at interpreting these graphs, okay? Here's another one. Trip to Winnipeg, trip from Winnipeg to Winkler, Winkler, Manitoba. So you got your distance up here. Notice that every tick is 20, and then every tick here is 30 minutes, right? So they started at zero time, zero distance, and as they drove, how long did they drive for the first little bit? They drove for an hour and made it about 65 kilometers. They stayed there for about how long? How long did they stay there for? How long did they stay there for? Well, if that's half an hour, 15 minutes they stayed there. So from A to B is 15 minutes. And they went and took off again. Looks like they went a little bit faster than they did here, right? A little bit faster, but whatever, no big deal. And they stopped again. They stopped after two hours for how long? They stopped for two hours. So they drove for two hours, stopped for two hours. That's probably when they got to Winkler, right? They stayed at Winkler for two hours because it was a day trip. And then they decided to go boom, straight home. And how long did it take them to get home? Right? Two hours it took them to get home. How long was the total trip? Boom, boom, boom. Six hours. What's the total driving time? There's another one. Total driving time. Well, that would be this first initial two hours. 15 minute rest. That would be 45 minutes. Sorry, that's just one hour. My apologies. That's just one hour. So one hour, right? Plus that's going to be 45 minutes, right? And then it took them two hours to get home. So three hours and 45 minutes driving time. Hmm. What's the total distance they drove? Well, it took them a hundred and looks like 30 clicks to get there. 130 clicks to get back. So you can tell the distance from Winnipeg to Winkler. So there's a lot of information on here that's kind of hidden within the graph, and it's up to us to interpret them. That's basically it. So here's another one, Sam's bike ride. So you can see that in, if this is 10, that's five. So it looks like in about two and a half minutes, he got up to 20 kilometers an hour. So this here is acceleration. He's trying to go so in two and a half minutes, he got up to 20 kilometers an hour. And then it looks like he maintained a steady speed for how long? Well, from here to here. So two and a half to 32 and a half, looks like 30 minutes he rode at 20 kilometers an hour. And then he went, boo, and he slowed right down to, if this is four, that's six, halfway, going to be five, right? And then he stopped, or no, he's coasting now. So he slowed down, deacceleration, deacceleration to about five, this is six, so about five kilometers an hour. And then he's going about five kilometers an hour for uh, five, ten minutes. And then basically he stopped and then he was there. So it's like he, he booked it, then he slowed down, he's getting closer, closer, coasting, maybe through town or on campus or something. Then he slows to a stop, boom. And he walks a little bit more, or even just stays there, and that's it. So it's all about knowing what your axes are, guys. It's all about looking for these things right here. And this is how we interpret graphs, okay? If you've got a bunch of questions in your book, uh, section 5.3, I've identified which they are. If you're not quite sure, come talk to me, and there you go.